Hi, I'm Captain Mike. And have you ever wished that you uh, could turn something on a potter's wheel, uh, some sort of a clay body, like a vase, uh, simply because you're tired of doing this plain old stuff like this, and you, but you don't have a potter's wheel, and really don't want to spend money on one, but you want to do something different. Well, I'm fixing to show you how to do that. This is the finished product. Everybody wants to see the finished product, and a lot of times long videos don't get around to it. This is a, uh, a, a little vase that I, that I did without a potter's wheel, without doing the coil method. This is another method. It's not a coil method, but this is a finished one. This one is made out of river clay, and this one here has been fired, and this one here is green, it's greenware, it's ready to be burnished if I want to, and uh, fire it. And this one here is just a little different design, and it has been burnished. So, if you're interested so far, you uh, just hang in here, and I'm fixing to show you exactly what you're going to need to do this. Okay, to complete this project, you're going to need a mold and for the the vases that I showed you I use this mold right here I have a couple of them you're gonna to have to make it and I will show you real quickly how to make this mold uh, very simple to do it's made out of plaster and I just if you only want to make one mold that's fine then you can cast two pieces that look like this and you're good to go. Uh, well what you'll need to do this is you'll need something to make a mold out of. This is the master that I used uh, to make that particular mold. It's a flexible silicone cup that I used to pour resins with or used to. Uh, it worked great but the first thing I had to do so it wouldn't flex is fill it full of plaster and this will work regardless of what you use for your master uh, the little round vase I showed you was made by using two of these these come from Dollar Tree uh, I advise you to go ahead and just before you start pour them full of plaster and uh, it'll pop right out and then they won't flex with you at all okay if you use a small glass one and I have made some small little uh, for, uh, clay bodies, you can use anything, uh, then you don't have to fill it full of plaster, but I'll tell you why I do it and why I would do it even with the glass one, is it makes this uh, neutral weight for what we're fixing to do next. So you've got your, you've got your whatever you're going to use, it's full of plaster, drill a little hole in just about the middle. Now you're going to need, here, here's what you're really going to need and all, once you get this done, we get this part done right here. You're going to need a bucket or something to use as that as the as the as the basic part of your mold. You're going to need uh, lots of paper towels, and some of these things you don't really need, but you can have them on hand. You're going to need probably a spoon. Wouldn't hurt to have a palette knife, a nice brush. Smaller brush if you want one, a razor blade or something else that you can scrape with, a whole bunch of burnishing stones if you want to burnish. Now I favor this one with a little cocoa pelle because it's, it is uh, endowed with magical properties as you all know and it makes all my pots come out perfect and none ever break or I never drop one or squish one or anything. So if you can find one with a cocoa pelle on it, hey you're ahead of the game. You're going to need probably a piece of sandpaper. You're going to need uh, some uh, slip. Now this is thick slip. We're fixing to do something with some other slip, but this is really thick slip here, like you would use to bind two clay body or two pieces of clay together. Uh, and of course, you'll need something to inscribe on the bottom of your pot. Put your mark on it so that everybody will know that it's yours. And you're going to need clay now. 
I have been using for most of these pots uh, my river clay, the clay that I get, it's natural clay, and I process it. I turn it into slip, and I pour it into my molds. Uh, you could do this with a coil method if you wanted to, using the uh, ah, using this. If you wanted just to make one exactly like this, you could coil it up and work it to the inside of your mold just fine. Give you a little something to push against, in fact. So you could use the coil method. If you don't have slip, you don't want to fool slip, get out your regular clay, whatever you got. Remember that regular clay is more plastic than the stuff I've got. Stuff I've got don't give much. You get to move messing around much with it and it's gonna crack on you. And it's easy to repair when it cracks, but it'll crack on you. But I'm gonna use that and that's what we use to pour all of these. Uh, so. Use regular slip, whatever slip you have, whatever you want to do. It all comes out in the end exactly the same. So those are all the things that you're going to need. Oh, and of course you're going to need <clears throat> some plaster, a spoon and, a, and a, something to stir the plaster up in. And of course you're going to need some water to mix your plaster. We're not going to get into all the plaster mixing. i got a video that covers that and so does everybody else on YouTube. So. You know, get your plaster when you get ready to this and, 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 and get ready to do it. Now, I'm going to show you a trick right here. Uh, this is going to be dense, dent, whew, let me get out, get it out of my mouth, uh, neutral density, which means you could push it on down in the, in the plaster when you get ready to do this, and it will probably stay wherever you push it, and it will uh, may even sink out of sight. But we don't want it to sink out of sight. So I got a stick, drilled a hole in it, put a little screw in it, Put you a fairly healthy screw. This is a little long, and that's when you drilled your hole in your plaster, because if you don't drill a hole and you try running this screw down in this plaster, it's gonna bust it. Might not be the end of the world, but it's gonna bust it. So screw this little thing on down there, and it's gonna give you a little bit of a, of a um, something to, to, uh, to use to adjust this width. Don't do it too tight. Okay, and the way that works is you get ready, you got your plaster in here, and you can put that. Now, use your sturdy stick. I could have used a sturdier stick on this. It gives a little bit, uh, but we're not going to make the mold. I'm just going to show you how, uh, and so I'll, next time I'll use a three-quarter inch thick stick. But that's what you need to do. You need to get a thicker stick, and it'll hold it just like that, and then you can adjust it back and forth and get it dead center on your plastic bucket. Uh, I try my best to, this bucket here's got, oh, uh, several inches on the bottom, and it doesn't really need it. Whatever you use, if you want to, uh, you can put some sand in here, whatever, to adjust it. You want at least an inch, an inch and a half right here, okay, from this part to this part. And you want about an inch around the edges. The more plaster you have around the edges and on the bottom on your mold, the more water it would absorb, uh, because when plaster quits absorbing water out of your slip or out of your clay, it quits thickening up. It'll just sit there in a big puddle for a long time. So that's what you do. You'll get that, you'll mix your, you'll mix your plaster up, you'll put it in, spray this with this here right here with vegetable oil, inside of your bucket with vegetable oil, push this thing down in there. If you have to add more plaster, then you just take your spoon and you add it until it's up. I would say within a quarter of an inch of the top. I wouldn't go all the way to the top because it makes it easier for the mold to come out when you bump it on the floor. Uh, but just let that sit there until it, until the plaster's hard, bump it out, this will come right on out, and then you have, uh, you've got yourself a mold. Let it dry, it's gonna take a while. But that's all you have to do to make your mold. Now, with that out of the way, the paper towels, by the way, was to clean up all the mess because the plaster's going to be everywhere, but you understand that. Okay, with that out of the way, then I'm going to show you how I put this thing together. Now, you want to, you want to, you'll end up with two pieces that look just like this. This is what you're after. It's two pieces that are the shape of whatever vase you want to, to, to make. Um, hang on. <clears throat> Now, I like to put them together. This is just a little on the hard side. I like to put them together while they are still kind of leather hard, like this one. Now, 
this river clay is really bad about deforming. So you have to be real careful. Handle it just like you would a newborn baby or a raw egg or something. And it won't mess up with you. Now, even though you think these things are perfectly round, they're not. The first thing you're going to do, of course, is you're going to even these edges out with something. Uh, I usually uh, take them and bump them on, the, on this a little bit. Just kind of get me a, an edge to work with. And you're going to laugh at me here because you're going to say that's not enough of an edge. If you want to work this edge down flat, you can. Do it with a razor blade, do it with a knife, do whatever. I'm not going to that much trouble. I do that sometimes, but I have a fix for this, so I don't do it. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to find out where this thing fits. So you put it like that, and all of a sudden it'd be an, over, be an overhang right there. See that over, big overhang right there. Okay, so you got to do two things. you got to keep turning it around until you find out where it fits and you can also kind of move it a little bit. Now, if you've got regular low-fire clay, high-fire clay, whatever you're going to use, you can you can mess these things around until they uh, until they fit a little better just by pushing them. I'm not going to push this thing much because <laughs> it'll break with me. Now, I mark it a couple of places so I can see when I get through messing around with it here on the next step that it goes right back where it's supposed to. Now here's the good part. You got your slip, okay? This is an old sodium silicate jar, right? It really doesn't have any in it. And once you got that done, you have to kind of be quick about this, on, especially on the river clay, because this stuff is super absorbent. It is more absorbent than uh, regular clay. Uh, what you want to do is take your flattest one, the one will always be thicker or flatter than the other if you're using my kind of clay and you don't uh, you don't uh, pay a whole lot of attention when you're molding it. And I go off and leave them and forget about them. All right, I take my little my little uh, uh, spatula thing here and that you mix colors up with. They cheap on eBay. Buy you one or they come in a kit. Get you a kit. Very 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 cheap. You'll be using them for everything from augers to cut holes in the top of these things with to mix and paint, which is what they're intended for. All right, now, what you do is you got that, that mixed up right there, and you'll do the same here. And uh, feel free to put plenty on the inside, like this one. You can just build you up a flat area, like this. Kind of hard to stay in camera, folks, and I apologize. All right, you got that done right there. You're almost there. Find your marks. Where are my marks? There's my two marks. Where are my marks? There's my two marks. So I'll line those two marks up, skeech this puppy down, kind of move it around with my fingers a little bit, and work this stuff in. Just, just You're not going to wiggle it much once it sits there. It's going to adhere. Uh, just kind of work it down with your fingers because this is the first of many, many steps. You'll have to go uh, many times back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. This is not a faster way than a potter's wheel. If you have a potter's wheel, you probably want to use it. If you don't have a potter's wheel and you don't want to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on one like I don't, probably will eventually, I'll probably bill me one. But you know, I got tired of flat stuff or cups and bowls, and so that's it. Folks, that thing's put together. You have yourself a line here. I usually let this thing sit up just a little while, but we're not this time. We're just going to go ahead and show you because it doesn't matter. I let this thing set up. This stuff will dry real fast. This is where I take my brush. You can use a small brush if you wish, or you can use these little brushes that I buy by the box. At Harbor Freight, they're machinist tool. I mean, machinist brushes to to use them around uh, a lathe and things. But they work great for all of my arts and crafts. Just dab yourself liberal amount and go around where you put this together. I'll get it out in a minute. 
and you're going to have to do this several times. Uh, it's not going to be uh, a one-time deal. You'll just you're watching your line. This first time, it's just kind of adding material. Is all it's doing. You'll begin to build it up and get rid of that seam line as you put on your second and third uh, bunches of, of of slip. So what I do is do that. It'll dry quick. Let that dry, and then once it dries, you will take your razor blade and you will go and start very slowly scrape it and you'll see where it comes off you know where you where you built it up here it'll come off and it'll leave unscraped stuff in the middle and that's where you'll put your next coat and you'll keep doing that and as you put your second or third maybe fourth coat on it get you something white hope this thing don't come apart that would be embarrassing when you scrape it, scrape it in this position so that you can see down the horizon. You'll be able to see where the dip is. And then you can come back and you can fill up that dip because that's what you're after initially is to get that dip filled up so that your contour is perfect and it doesn't look like a dip at all. And you can get there. It makes it stronger and you'll get rid of that dip. Now, let's say that you've already done that. You've got this thing done. It took three, four coats, whatever how many coats it took. You've got it just the way you want it, and uh, prior to sanding it and maybe rubbing it down with a wet, damp cloth and burnishing it, you'll take your an X-Acto knife uh, or something like that, and you will cut out one end. Both these ends are going to look just alike. Pick out which end you want it to be the sitting end, and you will cut right out the middle you know, I use a little round plastic thing, stick it on there, trace it, and you'll cut out the middle. You can put it all the way to the edge, you can leave yourself a little edge, get that out. When you cut that out with your X-Acto knife, cut it out at an angle. That way, the piece won't fall down inside. It'll be just like the top of a pumpkin. When you get that thing cut out, and you can pull it right out and throw it in your scrap bucket, and when it gets hard enough, then you can, you can clean that up. Now, here's the last thing I do before I finish the pot and get it ready to dry. The inside of this pot is going to look atrocious. Anybody would look inside of it, and who would look inside of it, but you got somebody that will and say, oh my God, it ain't finished on the inside. It never will be, unless you really want to get anal and get your spoon and get down inside there and tap it. You can do that. I'm not. What I do is I go and get me a, a container of slip. I use a plastic cup or I use a styrofoam cup. I get some regular slip that I poured these out of. And I take that slip and I pour it into this thing here. And I turn it. I agitate it. Back and forth, back and forth. And just a little bit, a couple of rounds, and I pour it out. If you think it needs more, you can let it dry a little bit and repeat the process. If you want to get a light, look down inside of it and see where you stand. That's totally okay. It's your business. You could eventually get that inside all healed up where it looks pretty good and it's stronger. Now, that's the tip I give you on these. Once you're through with all the messing around with the equator and the inside, then the rest is, 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 is basic. Uh, slip cast and stuff you want to clean it up if you sand it lightly with some sandpaper and I use this uh, open uh, grain sandpaper it's uh, kind of like the clean ovens and stuff with but it, it uh, the, the dust, go, dust goes through it uh, once you've got it sanded pretty good then I get a wet cloth a damp cloth and I'll go all over this and what that does is it takes the dust and it fills in any little holes you missed and it starts the burnishing process. The next thing you can do if you want to, before you even start burnishing it, if you want to take a plastic bag and rub it down really good, you can do that. It'll actually burnish it up probably good enough for this kind of earthenware here, or this uh, clay that I've got. It's got a little grog in it from the river. Uh, and then when you get that done, if you're not satisfied with it, get your coca pelle. This will ensure that nothing will happen to your pot 
from this point on and you burnish it and you know all about burnishing it. If you got one with a fairy on it or got one with a panda bear on it or something like that or a lizard, it's a no-go. You're probably going to break your pot. So remember that. And that's the last tip I'm going to give you. So once this thing is burnished, put your mark on the bottom of it, set it aside, and fire it. This particular stuff fires, I have been firing this river clay at 04. I'm going to put some in the kiln today and fire it all the way up to 10 just for grins and giggles. And I will report on how that comes out. But that's it, folks. That's how you make a pot. You can make any shape you want based on what you use to make your mold. And you have a really nice shaped pot. You can put a spout on it, you can put handles on it, you can do whatever you want to do. YouTube is just absolutely full of great ideas on attaching things to pottery using what they call slip. To me, slip is stuff you, you pour into the mold, but this is what they call slip. All the experts, I am no expert. This is what I used to attach this together with. This is what I would attach handles, I would attach a spout, whatever I wanted to put on it. So. This is it. This is how you make a vase, or a vase, if you will, uh, without a potter's wheel. And I hope you try it, and I hope you enjoy it. Let me know how your successes and your failures come out, and if it's my the failures are my fault, be sure to let me know, give me advice. I will, be, I will answer all your comments, and we'll all learn. Okay, I'm Captain Mike. It's my video on throwing a pot without a potter's wheel, and I am out of here.